So Rachel, what's on your radar? Well, yesterday in the Senate Health Committee, we were treated to yet another round of Senator Rand Paul versus Dr. Anthony Fauci. As you may recall, Senator Paul has been pressing Dr. Fauci on whether or not the U.S. taxpayer, by way of the National Institutes of Health, has been funding gain-of-function research on novel bat coronaviruses. So according to Dr. Fauci's own NIH, gain-of-function research refers to work that, quote, may be reasonably anticipated to confer attributes to influenza, MERS, or SARS viruses such that the viruses would have enhanced pathogenicity and or transmissibility in mammals via the respiratory route, end quote. In other words, it is scientific research that creates super viruses taking viruses as they exist in nature and making them even worse specifically for use in humans. This sounds terrible. <laughs> Probably for this reason, the Obama administration banned funding for this in 2014, deeming it too risky. In 2017, for unknown reasons, Dr. Anthony Fauci pushed hard for the United States to again fund gain-of-function research, and the moratorium was lifted. But even when this research was supposed to be banned, we now know that the EcoHealth Alliance diverted $600,000 worth of grants from the NIH to the Wuhan Institute of Virology to study bat coronaviruses. Thanks to reporting from the Washington Post, Josh Rogan, we also know that gain-of-function research was going on there. Even the World Health Organization now confirms this. But in May, Dr. Fauci told Senator Paul the idea that U.S. taxpayers were funding the gain-of-function fun gain research at the Wuhan lab was, quote, entirely and completely incorrect, end quote. He went on, the NIH has not ever and does not now fund gain-of-function research at the Wuhan Institute. So yesterday, Paul showed up with the receipts. He brought with him a paper on bat coronavirus research put forward by the Wuhan Institute. The paper's author, Dr. Shi Zheng Li, lists the grant number she was given by the NIH and credits the NIH for supporting the work. Senator Paul, who is himself a doctor, by the way, went on to explain how the research took bat coronaviruses and supercharged them to infect humans definitionally gain of function. Let's take a listen. In this paper, she took two bat coronavirus genes, spike genes, and combined them with a SARS-related backbone to create new viruses that are not found in nature. These lab-created viruses were then to shown to replicate in humans. These experiments combine genetic information from different coronaviruses that infect animals but not humans, to create novel artificial viruses able to infect human cells. Viruses that in nature only infect animals were manipulated in the Wuhan lab to gain the function of infecting humans. Fauci, to put it mildly, lost his cool, denying once again that NIH had ever funded gain-of-function research. Here's what he said. Senator Paul, I have never lied before the Congress and I do not retract that statement. This paper that you are referring to was judged by qualified staff up and down the chain as not being gain of function. So what was, let me take, finish. You take an animal virus and you increase its yeah. transmissibility to humans, right. you're saying that's not gain of function? Yeah, that is correct. And, and Senator Paul, you do not know what you are talking about, quite frankly, and I wanna say that officially. You do not know what you are talking about. So the back and forth went on. Paul read statements from scientists saying this type of research, again, research that literally supercharges bat viruses to infect humans, epitomizes gain of function. But rather than explaining how or if Paul might be wrong, Fauci just repeatedly raised his voice to call the senator a liar. Fauci never denied that the research took place or that the U.S. funded it. The best he could offer was that, quote, qualified staff at the NIH agreed this was not gain of function. Oh, really? Gain of function research manipulates viruses in nature to aggressively infect humans. This paper, funded by the NIH, describes manipulating bat viruses to aggressively infect humans. How is this not gain of function? Fauci never says. He never answers the claims from scientists at Rutgers and MIT, cited by Paul, that this meets the definition of gain of function. He just denies that it is. Even if we give Fauci the benefit of the doubt that he's merely mistaken about this paper, the NIH clearly funded, or he's 
Otherwise, he's playing word games. He's trying to tell us all not to believe our lying eyes, that this might be gain of function, but not that gain of function. And in the meantime, sit down, peasant. Don't question the science, you Philistine. You aren't owed an explanation about what your government may or may not have done. And this is precisely the problem. Throughout this entire pandemic, our political and public health leaders have been completely non-transparent. Now that we have Fauci's emails, we know that he questioned the efficacy of mask wearing and openly speculated that COVID may have come from a lab, despite making public statements to the contrary about both. He said there was no way we would have a vaccine by April. And he admitted to moving the goalposts on herd immunity estimates based on what he thought the country was, quote, ready to hear. It's the arrogance and the infantilizing that is so infuriating. It's our leaders deciding we are too stupid and too irresponsible to know the truth about what's actually going on. And it's why, again and again, when our leaders are exposed for having said one thing publicly while privately understanding another, we continue to lose faith in our institutions. We tune them out entirely or we turn to conspiracy theories instead. In times of low institutional trust, more transparency is needed, not less. And as we're coming out of the worst pandemic in modern history, how and why we got here, including what our government may or may not have done to contribute to it, should be given the most transparency of all. After all, these are really, really deadly pathogens that our government might be helping to create. Pathogens that are specifically trained to jump from animals to humans. If we don't know about them, how can we make decisions? How can we prepare or defend against them if, God forbid, they leak from a lab or fall into the hands of a hostile foreign government? And hey, aren't we the ones supposed to be deciding if the U.S. should be defunding this kind of research at all? This is not just a matter of proving Fauci wrong or right. This is about where our government money is going and what it is doing and who is responsible for it. This is about basic transparency and accountability of government. And no one, not even the God King Fauci, should be above it. So Ryan, my biggest issue with kind of the back and forth between Paul and Fauci yesterday is that Fauci never actually engaged the substance. You mm -hmm. know, he never said, you know, why this wasn't gain of function research. He was just like, it's not. All these people say it's not. And you're a liar. And that is not really instilling me with confidence, I have to say. <laughs> so this virus might be gaining function, but it is not <laughs> gain of function. Right, yeah. Move no, some I, commas yeah. around and it's different. Yeah, I totally, I think you put your finger uh, right on it there because if he engages with Rand Paul, he feels like he's debasing himself. Like he feels like he's now accepting the, the premise that, that he ought to be in a conversation with, with Rand Paul about, about this. And the idea that Rand Paul is, ele is, is an elected official, that was, he was sent there by voters and he represents a portion of the populace, doesn't, doesn't seem to influence his thinking on, on, that, on that question. He, and, and, it, and it goes to the, the, our broader inability to, to have conversations in, in the public. In, instead of grappling back and forth, all both sides have to do is just repeatedly say that it's not true. Then, then you do some kind of transitory uh, kind of function where you find something else that somebody has said wrong who's close to that person, and you say, well, if, if you're even engaging with this person, uh, you're denying the Holocaust. Like, you're, right. like you, yeah. you very quickly. It goes from zero to just, 60, just, like instantly. Yeah. yeah. Right. No, and I think. You want people to die. Like, yeah. Put, like, <laughs> you, you, you obviously, you want a pandemic and you want people to die. Right. Well, and, you know, we've seen this rhetoric actually deployed last week at the White House. They were like, oh, you don't want us to use Facebook? Or do you want to kill people? You know, right. right? And, you know, I think it just goes back to this idea that, that you just mentioned, which is, you know, Senator Paul is elected, right? He's elected to represent these concerns and these interests. And, Nobody's really above that. Fauci has to be able to answer those questions. And the fact that he's so defensive, the fact that he doesn't think he needs to explain it at all, I think should give us pause. Like this is what creates uncertainty in the populace. This is right. what discredits public health officials when they seem like they're not being transparent and they seem like they're being evasive or defensive. And the problem is that tactically he might be right. It, like, he, yes, correct. Right. Like that, that's the great unknown here. We can't just say you can't just say, well, you're a liar and not tell us why. If you want people to trust what you're saying, you need to be as transparent as possible. And Fauci oh, has I don't, a history I don't mean of not he might be that. right on the merits. He might be because I, 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 I don't I don't actually know gain of function yeah. <laughs> research that, that, that closely. But what I mean is that as a as a tactic to defend his own reputation, just simply shouting at Paul and and you know shutting him down as uh, you know as 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 the headlines would say, is is an effective strategy for him to to just 
live another day. Like because NPR and all the other kind of uh, liberal media outlets will just say Fauci shouted down Rand Paul. And if and if you are a listener of, of NPR, you're a reader of the New York Times, your heuristic is satisfied right there. Oh, Fauci and Rand Paul got into a shouting match. I'm obviously with Fauci. Right. <laughs> The last thing I'll say is this, you know, when I worked in the Senate, I did work on some public health issues. I met with the NIH and I will tell you, they don't want to be questioned. You know, you ask mm -hmm. for a meeting with them, you will sit across from them, they'll bring four staff and 12 lawyers and they will do your, their darndest not to answer anything you were saying. So I do think there's probably something more here. I hope, you know, senators continue to press on that because again, you know, we're owed as much transparency as possible. But with that, Team Rising will join us next. Stay with us.